Hello, you're welcome to this channel, Sword of the Spirit. My name is Samuel Omaka, the preacher working with the Church of Christ, Odona Kekere Ibadan. With me this uh, with me here this morning to discuss an important topic. Uh, my mentors and teachers in Christ, um, people who I esteem very highly, and I will plead with you to please uh, pay your attention to what I have to say on the topic of fornication, adultery, and the you. And of course, I will also plead with you to subscribe to our channel after watching this video. So first, we have um, uh, Brother Obemi for Olushala. He was here with us uh, last week. Brother, please introduce yourself, sir. Good morning, viewers. Uh, and good morning, uh, Brother Samuel. I'm Obemi for Olushala, the preacher of the Church of of the Word of God at the Church of Christ in Tafaji in Ibadan for your state. Thank you Thank for you. having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And with us here, we also have uh, with us here this morning uh, a seasoned preacher and the teacher and the mentor, Brother Benson. Brother Benson, please introduce yourself. Good morning to you, dear listeners. My name is Benson Omole. I'm a gospel preacher. I'm working with the Church of Christ meeting in Ekuti quarters at Doekiti. Ekiti State is in Nigeria. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir. I'm honored to be uh, here with you this morning. Um, actually, I'm not in any position to question these men because they are my teachers and mentors, but we want to glean from their knowledge and vast experience this morning. <laughs> so we... We want to speak on, on an important topic that has been ravaging the society, and that is this topic of fornication, adultery, and you. And what I mean, you, we are talking about Christians, believers in Christ. What should be their proper conduct to these um, uh, issues that we have in the society? Uh, Brother, please, I'm going to start with you. I want you to help us with what fornication is. Because these days, it seems people don't really uh, know, uh, people don't really understand what fornication is. They call it a lot of things, entag entanglement, entanglement, um, and many words. They just try to to lessen the meaning of the word. So we would like to reemphasize the definition of fornication. Well, thank you. Uh, from Microsoft Ekanta Dictionary, 2009, it defines uh, fornication as consenting sex involving somebody unmarried, sexual intercourse between two consenting adults who are not married to each other. The uh, word, the term fornication is also a generic term that includes all kinds of illicit sexual relationship between two persons. Either one of them is married and the other is unmarried. So it is a, a and it also encompasses uh, lesbianism, gay marriage, um, best, uh, bestial, bestialism, yes. and um, adultery, yes, and many other kinds of uh, illicit or ungodly sexual relationship. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Um, please, um, I would also, um, you know, I would also want to ask you some certain, uh, some questions. And this time I want us to answer it from the biblical perspective. What are the destructive effects of fornication in one's life? Whether a Christian or not a Christian, what are the destructive effects that fornication can have on in one's life? Well, since fornication is one of the sin that Bible warned us against, the first effect of fornication is separation from God. According to Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2, it says, God's hand is not shortened to save, nor is ear heavy to hear our prayers, but our sins have separated us from our God. So whenever we indulge, <laughs> In, in, in sexual immorality, that's fornication, then such a one is spiritually separated from the source of life, from God. 
And in fact, in First Corinthians 6, verse 9 to, to 10, says the fornicators shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Another effect is that fornication endangers the physical body. In the book of Proverbs chapter 5, the wisest king uh, advised the young people against fornication, and it reveals that it caused damages to, uh, to the physical body of those who are involved in it. We have seen a lot of people contacting HIV, gonorrhea, and many deadly diseases, even some uh, fall victim of some terrible uh, no, uh, um, idolatrous effect because of indulging in uh, fornication. In verse 11, Proverbs 5, 11, and you mourn at last when your flesh and your body are consumed. So many people around the world have their bodies consumed because of fornication. It also has the effect of damaging our emotions. Anywhere discussion about um, a marriage or living a life of purity, wherever that topic is being discussed, your feelings, your conscience will always be held guilty. And in fact, we have seen a lot that uh, such kind of feelings still haunt them, even after getting into marriage, after some years. Then another thing is that it also damage or destroy marriage. Anyone who is involved in fornication will uh, as betray the trust of the other uh, uh, marital spouse. So it damage the trust that should Thank exist you. between husband and wife. Thank so you. So even much. we have seen some men and women who felt that their partner is cheating on them, even though. Uh, because they are aware of the secret about uh, other sexual dealings with others before they got to know each other. So that uh, previous understanding of the proximity of the other partner still haunts them, even in marriage sometimes. Thank so, you so much, sir. It could destroy marriage. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful point. Brother Benson Obole, um, uh, good to have you again, sir. Thank you for honoring our invitation to join our talk today. Sir, we want you to help us. Uh, Thank you very much. We want you to help us and tell us the difference between fornication and adultery. In uh, our brother's definition, he says both can mean the same thing on some cases, yeah? But is there any difference? Is there any line of difference between fornication and adultery? Well, my brother Kwame Paul had made a landmark uh, definition concerning what fornication is. It is wrong for many people to assume that um, uh, adultery is only when I mean fornication is only when they are not married. That, that is, a married man having a sexual, illicit sexual relationship with another person. They say that one is not fornication. It is wrong. Fornication is the is the term that encompasses all illicit sexual relationship. So the definite action of a married person having illicit relationship, that one is called adultery. But it is still fornication because it involves illicit, unapproved, unauthorized, unscriptural sexual intercourse. So every act, Every act of adultery is a fornication, but not every act of fornication is adultery. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for that. Yeah, still on that, sir. In Matthew chapter 19, verse number uh, verse 9, 
Jesus made a statement that uh, one is not to put his partner away except for the uh, case of sexual immorality. So that phrase, sexual immorality, a lot of people has read a lot of meaning into it. Many people have argued that it's not talking about uh, a partner cheating on a fellow partner. Many people have gone ahead to define sexual immorality as so, to mean so many things. And so even some people on that passage says that, uh, well, even if uh, your, part your partner cheats on you, you don't have the right to divorce him or her because Matthew chapter 19 verse 9 is not really talking about your partner cheating on you or something there about. So could you give us, um, uh, let's say, a, 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 you know, a, a, an exegesis of that passage, Matthew chapter 19 verse 9. What is it actually talking about? What does the phrase sexual immorality mean as, uh, you know, saved by our Lord Jesus Christ there. Okay, thank you very much, my dear brother. Yes, from the context of Matthew chapter 19, the context was set forth in verse 3, which says, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? The premise here was that they were asking Jesus, two people who are married, married, not single, married. Is it right for one of them to divorce the other? Okay. That is the premise of the, and the intent of that passage. The context is set forth in verse three. Then the statement of Jesus in verse nine, that except for sexual immorality, the definition of that sexual immorality must relate to the context. And the context there, the context there is adultery. If Moses we allow married, Israelites to put away their wife for any reason at all and marry another one. And from this mindset, they approach Jesus. What did you say? Jesus Christ referred us back, showing the example of the first marriage in the Garden of Eden. And by so doing, Jesus Christ wanted the whole humanity to go back to the beginning of the law of marriage, the chastity and the purity in marriage. No divorce. Marriage is supposed to last till life. And this is the etymology of the statement they make when they are being solemnized, that is, till death do us part. Thank you so much. Now, Okay, Go now, on. Jesus Christ gave an exception, except there is sexual immorality, which here, according to the context, meant adultery. Why adultery? First Corinthians chapter 6, from 16 downward, made us to know that when one makes a sexual intercourse with a harlot, they have become one flesh. What makes a man and a woman to become one flesh is the sexual intercourse. Then, look at salvation. Hearing the word of God is unto salvation. Believing the word of God is unto repentance. Confession is unto. Baptism is not unto, is into. Likewise, marriage ceremony is unto marriage. Receptions is unto marriage. Traditional associations, real activities is unto marriage. It is the consummation of marriage that happens on the night of the 
so-called wedding, the, that consummation joins a man with his wife. Hence, if a woman now goes ahead to be joined together with another man, a harlot, that is to say, according to the allowance Jesus Christ gave here, it is necessary, therefore, to severe that marriage to divorce. So God, through Christ, gave allowance that the man, the man in this case, is the man who is innocent. He can put away his wife and marry another one because he is innocent. In Matthew chapter 5, 32, the, the context there is different. The, the context of Matthew 5, 32 was unto the woman. What made her to go astray into adultery? It's you, man, who left her. But in Matthew chapter 19, the attention is unto the man. When she commits that adultery, you are free to leave her and marry another. So Moses gave general rules, but Jesus gave specific rule here. Thank you, and sir. And some people were saying, what if the relationship becomes toxic? What if there was no adultery or fornication of any kind? What if the life of one is threatened? First Corinthians 7, 10 and 11. If by any chance you leave, remain unmarried because you are still scriptural wife of the man you left. Despite it, toxic... I don't know whether that will satisfy you enough. Yes, of course, sir. you've uh, touched a lot of things. So um, thank you, thank you. Uh, so despite the uh, toxic, <laughs> despite the toxic nature of the marriage or the violent nature of the marriage. So if the life is threatened, the person is free to leave, but he must stay, he or she must stay unmarried. That's what he says, sir. Are, are you there with us, sir? Yeah, he must stay unmarried. Okay, that sir. is what the scripture says in First Corinthians chapter 7. If by any chance, for whatever reason, Bible did not give the reason, but for any reason at all. If for any reason, if the man or the now to the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, a wife is not to depart from her husband, but even if she departs, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And Thank the you, husband sir. also is not to divorce his wife. Thank you. God bless you, sir, for that. Yeah. So I, I'm still going to ask you Thank another you. question, sir, on that. I'm sorry. But um, we have another case here. Um, the next question is, how can one properly establish the case of adultery? Because there are so many insinuations. In fact, there are so many funny causes of um, uh, breakups in our modern world. Um, a brother said that he was uh, reading uh, through the phone of his wife, and then he saw, uh, you know, a sensual chat with another man, and because of that, he's filing for divorce. Uh, what would you say? How can one properly establish the case of adultery scripturally? Okay, is that I hope the question is for me? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes adultery yes. is the only, adultery is the only exception to marriage, the only exception according to the law of the kingdom of God. Yes, to establish adultery, we were properly educated by God that we need, by the mouth of two or three, we are to establish the truth. Well, 
there are various acts of fornication. Merely kissing the hand of another woman, that is not adultery. It may be an attitude that may lead, eventually lead to adultery. But adultery is yet to be established. There must be a sexual activity. And such sexual activity must have a witness. You who are alleging your wife for a sexual activity outside your marriage, who will testify before either the court, who will testify either if before the church, you must have a witness. That's number one. Number two, uh, adultery is, is, is the flower, the manifestation of the lust of the heart. Luke chapter 16, verse 18. That proceeds the evil thoughts that will eventually lead to evil actions. So the woman who walks disorderly can be rebuked, can be disciplined, but that will not lead to uh, divorce. Like the example you cited, mere emotional discussions on the phone, calling another man my dear, may not necessarily lead, I mean, may, should not necessarily lead to the All right. All right, sir. It must have a witness. All right, sir. All right, thank it you, sir. It may not necessarily be able to thank claim his right. Even apart from that, the... All right, sir. Our time is our time is almost up. So let's attend to other questions right now. So uh, the brother himself must the brother right. must be investigated because right. the brother may have part of the blame. Okay, can sir. I add to that point? Uh, no, we have a lot of questions we need to treat. And um, okay, if maybe, the maybe husband, okay, contributing if the brother contributed. So the sin of the sister, he cannot stand to claim his right anymore. You know what? We are going to have we are going to have another meeting. We are not going to commit the sin of We are going to have another meeting on this subject on Friday because it's obvious we cannot be able to digest all the points we have here. So I think we are going to have a part two of this meeting on Friday because there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to actually um you know be, be said on this subject uh but right now we have less than seven minutes uh to the close of our meeting and so next friday we're going to have a continuation of this subject but before we go uh quickly um brother open people please tell us how serious does god view fornication how serious is it let's discuss that point the next uh week uh, friday we're going to continue with where brother benson almost stops today Thank you. Uh, according to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 8, we read the believers in Christ are warned against sexual immoralities. And we, uh, the example of the Israelites in the wilderness was cited, said, no, let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. So how terrible could such a sin be in the presence of God that 23,000 people had to die for committing fornication? In Deuteronomy chapter 22, we could read about God's penalty for all those who are guilty of fornication. 
in that uh, Deuteronomy 22, Bible says they should be stoned to death. Mm. If a lady is not found as a virgin on the night of her wedding, God's instruction in Deuteronomy 22, verse 20 to 21, is that such a woman should be stoned to death. In fact, a, a daughter of priest must be born alive. Must, she must be burnt off for committing that sin. So, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, it says, All fornicators shall not inherit the kingdom of God. In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 and 10, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous. You can see the list as well. Then in Thank Revelation you. 21, verse 8, says the sexual immoralities shall find their part in the lake that burns with fire. Therefore, it is a toxic, it's a terrible and a fatal sin that a child of God and everyone who, 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 who loves to obey God must run away from. It is better to go and marry than to burn with the lust of fornication. First Corinthians. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate uh, Brother Benson Omole and uh, Brother Okwemipo for joining us in this program this morning. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. We're going to have a second part of this discussion next Friday because we still have a lot to say. I can see that we still have a lot to say. This is a very serious issue ravaging the brotherhood the christian the christian dom, and so we need experience and wisdom like you in order to be able to navigate it thank you so much and may god bless you sir thank you thank you thank you